uh, I'm going on evidence. I'm going to follow the evidence. I'm not going to follow my feelings. I'm going to follow the evidence and true accounts and statements that people have said. Her last known whereabouts, for example. The police told them it was Prosset Reservoir. And where did they go? They went to Boca. Boca. Because someone got in touch with them called Nick, the tow truck guy, the roadside maintenance guy, and told them she was in Boca, or he believed he saw it in Boca. Okay, now listen to this bullshit here. Like I said, you know, it's, uh, it's just overwhelming to talk about it. Uh, you know, if, if it looks like it talks like it walks like it smells like it tastes like it, I mean, it, you know, things just eventually overwhelmingly add up. And then when we're in there in that moment, and it, there's just an energy, you know, vibe that just can't be explained. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, like I said, you know, it's, uh, it's just overwhelming to us what, what we were dealing with. So much looking down to the right, to the left, down to the right, to the left. There's so much. Was uh, Nick the tow truck guy or the roadside assistant guy? Um, did he verify the vehicle, or was it more highly than he recognized? Um, every, everything about his story was verified, um, and then, you know, as far as with us, it was verified. Um, you know, we didn't. Um, he became a part of his story because of his credibility. Oh, that sly looking down. Look again. You know, anyone? I um, did he verify the vehicle, or was it more highly than he recognized? Uh, every, everything about his story was verified, um, and then, you know, as far as with us, it was verified. Um, you know, we didn't. Um, he became a part of his story because of his credibility. You know, anyone, anyone who um, dismisses him as not being credible is wrong, 100%. Uh, you got to think that. There you go. Anybody that, dis is mi that dismisses Nick as being credible is wrong. That's from this guy. He's no detective. He's not FBI. All right. He's not fucking um, Homeland Security. He's a diver, people. He's a diver. He finds missing vehicles and missing people. He finds them because of his specialty in sonar equipment, underwater research. And here he is telling 2K subscribers, 2K people in this chat, that were in this chat, probably more at the time when he was on, that there's no way this isn't suspicious and what that tow truck guy slash roadside maintenance guy said. It, it's credible. It's absolutely credible. And he is saying, the tow truck slash roadside maintenance guy, that he saw Kylie and who was believed to be Jagger the day after she's believed to have died. The morning after, 11am approximately, there was something up with the car. He goes on to, help to tell this whole great, whacking, great, fucking big lie. Okay? That caused thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people on the internet to harass the people involved in Kylie's life, her friends, her family, anybody they can get their hands on, anybody that they could contact, anybody. He is a tragedy pimp. Yeah, we, we wouldn't have went there if it wasn't. Um, and 90% of what we talked about obviously hasn't been shown and won't be shown unless there are certain you know, developments in this case. 90% um, of what we have won't be shown. Did you hear him? But it, 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 it's not being credible is wrong 100%. Um, you got to think that you know we, we wouldn't have went there if it wasn't. Um, and 90% of what we talked about obviously hasn't been shown and won't be shown unless there are certain you know, developments in this case. Um, but won't it, be it, shown it, unless there's certain developments in this case. What the hell does that mean? Unless there's certain developments. And hiding behind this cloak of, we can't reveal the information now because it will... Um, interfere with the investigation are you having a laugh so you're claiming that you've got information 90 percent you've held back right from the public but if certain things happen during the investigation then you'll release it well what the fuck are you holding back what are you holding back 90 percent of what you know you are only going to release if there are certain developments in this case, <sighs> and you trust this man, you trust Definitely this man. And, wow. uh, awesome this young man. man. There are red flags all over this guy and you're just ignoring them because you want to believe he's this good guy that rescues people and helps families. Why do you do that? Why does it matter to you so much that you think this guy's good, even when it's glaringly obvious there's red flags and things that need to be um, questioned? Seriously, it's to be questioned. Why you ignore them? Became part of what is you know it. What, do you know what happens when we ignore them? This is how monsters become monsters. Because at every step of the way, there's someone overlooking something that they did. 
and covering it up and repainting it every step of the way. And it takes something like what Jared is being indicted for, for people to wake up. And if you go and look at the comments, because we're going to go and have a look at them as well, the comments on his page from his recently uploaded video, they assume, I assume, is on scheduled release and it's not that prick uploading them fucking himself physically. There are comments over there <laughs> that do not even believe that this is even happening. They're writing things like, I can't wait for all this to be over and you to go back to rescuing all these families. Please don't let AWP fall apart, Jared. We want you, okay? Turning a blind eye to a possible child fucking rapist. A sex offender. And you wonder why there's so many of them. You wonder why there's so many. Because at every step of the way of them becoming what they are, there's somebody looking the other way. That's how they become what they are. All right? That's how they become what they are. Every step of the way, they're overlooked. Because of how people feel about themselves when they see bad in somebody else. If you see bad in somebody else, it doesn't diminish you. It doesn't mean you're a good person. People are too brainwashed with this idea of always look for the good. Right? It's like toxic. I, what? What is that? It's like toxic goodness. It's not toxic positivity. Is it toxic positivity that? Could it come under that? It probably could. Because you're just about completely being positive about things even when they're negative. As though there's something wrong with acknowledging negative things. Or it means that you're a miserable and like fucked up person. The world's filled with negative and horrible things. Filled with them. What is it about overlooking bad signs in people? The people, why people do that? that? I hate it. I hate it. Toxic positivity. I hate it. It's destructive. It's destructive. So destructive. We don't enhance anything. We don't fake anything. Um, and we're, we're not out to create drama. Talked about obviously hasn't been shown and won't be shown unless there are certain you know, developments in this case. Um, but it, it's, it's definitely credible. And uh, also, young man, uh, he's just, you know, became part of what it is that Are we you do. noticing lots of looking away while he's saying these things? He's looking away a hell of a lot. A hell of a lot. Is it when we look to the right, it's our creative brain in working order? Is that is that when we're looking to the right, it's our creative brain? Because he's looking to the right there. Is that your imagination? Where you can think up stories and pre-edit them quickly while you're talking and it's a complete lie let me know in the comments if someone knows you know, we don't enhance anything we don't fake anything um and we're, we're not out to create drama it, this is just we don't um, fake anything and we're not about he became drama. a part of the story because of his credibility you know anyone anyone who um dismisses him as not being credible is wrong 100 percent um you gotta think that you know we, we wouldn't have went there if it wasn't um and 90 percent of what we talked about obviously hasn't been shown and won't be shown unless there are certain you know, developments in this case um but he's definitely credible and uh also young man and, uh, he's just how often he's repeating he's a credible man he's a credible man where we, we we're holding things back and we're only going to release it he just keeps repeating the same lines you know why because he is lying right there he is lying right there and some of us knew he was lying when this first aired so what does that say about all you true crime fanatics you maniacs Part of what it is that we do, you know, we don't enhance anything, we don't fake anything, um, and we're, we're not out to create drama. It, this is just how it unfolded organically for us. Uh, and that's just the way it happens on all our cases. You know, we, we come into cases a lot of times, and they haven't been worked on in twenty years, and we, we come to town in one day and uncover evidence or clues, X factors that have never been uncovered. And, and what just... superstars you are doing that? Okay, now I know it sounds shitty. I do feel for every single family that have helped and every single family that hoped to get help because I can't even imagine what that must feel like and I don't ever want to, okay? But that does not mean that you overlook red flags and bad signs in people. Predators hone in on vulnerable areas. Anywhere where there's good people, you will find predators because predators know good people give money. They'll give the money away. If a predator starts a cause or creates a cause, they know that that brings in all the good people. All the good people. Yeah. And it also brings in all the blind people that want to feel good about themselves. Because when you do something good, you feel good about yourself. And there's a lot of people that don't feel good about themselves on their own. So they will do things compulsively. 
like just giving the money away, money after money after money. Even when the signs are there, the red flags, they will still keep doing it. And predators fucking know that. They know that. Okay, you repeat a lie often enough and people will believe it. It's really weird how all that unfolds there. Um, but back to how, you know, who he identified and, and all of that, you know, it's, uh, uh, he, he, did, he knew what he was talking about and in those identifications, uh, we, we were confident in, in what he was saying. There like we go. Again, pointing direction to Jagger. All right, and Kylie possibly being alive the morning after what was... The morning after the night, she was believed to have passed away. All right. Here he is again reiterating that that was a fact, that she was seen at Boca with a guy in an SF cap description like Jagger, presumed to be Jagger without saying it, but they said it. All right. And if necessary, I'll pull him up too. fucking Jared. And you say identification, did it appear to be your understanding that it was Kylie? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, now, so now, 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 if, if, if there's, now if there's... there you go. He confirms. So did you think it was Kylie from your understanding of how this guy, Nick, relayed the, his information? Are you under the illusion that it was her? He said yes. Listen again. For error, it was, uh, uh, he, he, did, he knew what he was talking about in those identifications. Uh, we, we were confident in, in what he was saying. Like that. Okay. When you say identifications, it appeared to be your understanding that it was Kylie? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, now, so now, now, if, 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 there's, if there's room for error, it, there definitely could be because, um, I mean, she's... And this is what narcissistic people do, right? They will tell you something... And they will always put in an insurance policy. And that's what he's doing here. He's putting in an insurance policy. And that insurance policy can be pulled out at any time. Because he's about to say what he is saying. That there's room for error and obviously we can be mistaken. Okay? And that's the, that's the insurance policy. That's to cover. So if it does come back that it wasn't her. Well, I did tell you that there was room for error. Alright? I did tell you that there was room for error. It's a snake move is what that is. You do not go from being... 100% confident that you know Kylie and Jagger were there and you've got 90% um, you've held back 90% of your footage and knowledge of what you know about what was going on you've held that back and you're only going to disclose it if certain things happen in this investigation what the fuck are you talking about what are you talking about you are lying lying you know, I'm not trying to draw any unnecessary heat on anybody else, but I mean, she's not the only blonde girl in California. So you I mean, are not trying to draw any heat on anybody else. That's exactly what you did, Doug. That's what you did to the family of a girl that I believe you have a child the same age of. I have heard you say in one of those videos recently that you have a child the same age as Kylie. How would you feel having the whole entire internet? dispute and talk about in disgusting ways the disappearance of a child of yours how would you feel okay because that's what you took part in doing to kylie rodney's family right and her friends what happened to those kids is an outrage and i cannot believe nobody says anything about it i can't believe it they're they're 18 year old real people real people with real lives with graduations going on that this one here zav Right. She was zooming in on, on her, on her um, stream on all the different people surrounding um, Sammy and Jagger and who was there and watching them give their speeches when the um, when Jagger graduated and, Kat and Sammy turned up for the for his graduation. So they were pulling that to pieces. Why is she there? Are they seeing each other? Well, there's rumours that they were sleeping together and blah, blah, blah. It was disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And they... Zav took part in destroying their social media reputations for life. This shit on the internet is going to stay here forever. When they are 25, 35 and 45, their names are still going to be in titles on this platform. Discussing disgusting stuff. And they're going to have to explain that to any future kids or any future employment or any future friends that they may have. You've destroyed their reputations by accusing them of being involved in the cover-up Right, of the death of Kylie Rodney. That is what you did. And you need to be accountable for that. You need to own that shit before you go anywhere near any other families. That's what I think and that's what I feel. You have no business being around vulnerable people if this is the shit you pull. No business at all. And finding missing people does not compensate for doing this. It does not. You re-traumatise and re-victimise. You re-victimised all those people. Every time. 
every time and it was every night live after live after live eight hours long six hours long just all day every day live after live after live after live there must have been 50 lives going on about bloody Kylie Rodney Sammy investigating Sammy and looking into her Bullhorn Betty was going to get on this person that was allegedly a friend of Sammy and they were going to deep dive into all her past her first case who she was friends with who she felt like can you imagine having that done to you I can that is just seriously violating. These people keep no boundaries and that is your first clue. If they do not keep boundaries, they are toxic, right? That's what that says, clear as day. You don't need any other red flag. If they can't keep boundaries within the profession that they claim to be in, which is all this true crime and investigation and finding people bullshit, right? Ambulance chasers, otherwise known as ambulance chasers. If they can't, if they can't keep boundaries, they have no business being around vulnerable families. None. None. It very well have been somebody else. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you, you, you have him describing oh, well, very, very mysterious. Yeah, there's else. room for error. It, there definitely could be because, um, I mean, she's, you know, I'm not trying to draw any unnecessary heat on anybody else. But, I mean, she's not the only blonde girl in California. So, I mean, could it very well have been somebody else? Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you, you, you have him describing very, very mysterious behavior. Um, that's weird. That's really weird. And, you know, you guys as the public, I'm speaking, um, have put out there better than we have like why were they standing on each side of the vehicle how come they couldn't stand together and what was what was, there's, explaining this weirdness was it her could have been somebody else and this, were they trying to stop somebody from going to the back of the vehicle that's what we're all thinking, we're yeah, all thinking. yeah that's a possibility i mean I, i'm not saying this to just take everybody down further down the rabbit hole. I, I myself don't know like what, what what was that i mean how else do you explain two people that won't stand on the same side of the car with each other and if he went to one side the other would go to the mm -hmm. other and so forth what are they doing uh, well how do you explain something that probably never even happened i don't know i don't know doug this is a um... We're being pedantic about the semantics. That's what this is. All right. That's just a trick. These, this, this is all just semantics. The point is the girl was found at the bottom of a bloody reservoir in the back of a car. Okay. Where most people are found when a car sub is submerged with in water. That's what typically happens. That's, that's it. Okay. It sounds like going back to people, right? Yeah. That's what we're thinking. I mean, it sounds good. It sounds legitimate. Yeah. I myself don't know. Like, what, what, what was that? I mean, how else do you explain two people that won't stand on the same side of the car with each other? And if he went to one side, the other would go to the other, and so forth. What are they doing at that point? They're trying to stop somebody from going to the back of the vehicle, right? Yeah, that's what we're thinking. Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds legitimate. Yeah, and that's why we're wondering if it, maybe it wasn't Kylie, and maybe he just recognized the car. He saw a blonde. Yeah. And he just yeah. Saw yeah. And you also have to understand that this young man is a week later walking into a store, seeing a flyer, and boom, he understands what he saw and what what, what happened with him out there, and he's putting it all together. So how about he's not what I first wrote he was on my community post? A narcissist trying to insert himself into the case for some fucking 15 minutes of YouTube attention. Why is that theory never looked at? Why are those theories never looked at? It's always the theories these guys follow that are the craziest, the wackiest, that lead you down the most cr ridiculous paths. The, these are the types of bloody things they follow. They're the leads that they, they look up, okay? It's never the simplest one, right? It's always the craziest one. The one that allows them to get away with the horrendous behaviour, the boundaryless behaviour. That's why they choose these wacky theories because it, it, it justifies what they're doing then, doesn't it? Well, we think it might be this or that. That just covers that we should be all right doing this. We're fine doing this because this is what we think might have been. So, so, so what? It doesn't matter what you think. We're allowed to have an opinion. We can do what we want. Oh, can you? Can you? Right. Well, not in regards to real life and real families going through trauma. No, the fuck you can't. And I can't wait till you lot carry on doing this so much that they start putting laws in place where you guys have to keep your fucking mitts off real life cases that are ongoing. I can't wait because that's all you narcissistic people are doing. You are going to force laws to change. That is what you're doing. You are ruining like everything else, you are ruining it for the rest of us because you can't keep within boundaries. Put a boundary in front of you, you'll fucking break it. I think there might be room for error in the female, per se, and or the male. I mean, you know, everybody wants to talk about one individual, you know, because of that hat. I mean, how many millions of those hats have been sold? It's California. That's a very popular style of hat amongst... Yes, insert your insurance policy there. Uh, well, there's loads of those caps. So, you know, even though we completely implied and led you to believe it was Jagger, just keep in the back of your mind that there are lots of those caps. Okay. And if you come back and say to us like we are now, um, it wasn't Jagger that you saw. It can't have been because of A, B and C. Um, well, do you know what they're just going to say? What I expect this guy to say? Well, we did kind of tell you that loads of people do wear black caps and it possibly wasn't Jagger. All right. Okay, then. Well, it's all right what you did to everybody. It's all right that Jagger was followed three times in real life. It's all right that Sammy was followed two times in real life. It's all right that they had to shut down the social media change. It. 
stop their friends or stop everyone being able to leave comments and look at the posts. They have to stop using social media when at a time in grief uh, and you do want to be on your own a lot. Guess where you'd end up probably sat looking while you sat crying. You'd probably go on your social media, look at past messages remember moments get upset about that you're never going to see them again and shit like that and you'd probably want to go on social media to forget for a few minutes but hey ho they couldn't do that could they they couldn't even use their social media to talk to their social media friends because you lot invaded it you invaded their entire fucking lives you kept zero boundaries in regards to those people none none of you and you sit there and call yourselves true crime. <laughs> That's a fucking joke in itself. The only people committing crimes are fucking you lot. Crimes against humanity, all right? And just because there is no law for what you are doing right now does not mean that morally and ethically it's okay, all right? It says a lot about the types of people you lot are. It really does. And I can't believe, well, I can, because narcissistic people, they don't have self-insight, they can't introspect, and they don't see. They just don't see. So why am I expecting people to see something that they can't see? I don't know. I guess I'm stupid. But this event that happened, right, and all the other events be before it, people didn't speak up enough before when they were doing it to the whales and when they were doing it to the Rusex. Because this is, this is how it's got this bad. Because not enough people are making a stand about what these people are doing to families. Just yesterday we had Brandy Neal making a plea making a plea while they're digging up gra gardens and grass and ground and fucking mud and soil, right, in a garden somewhere in Fruitland, right now, trying to find remnants, a trace, whatever it is they're looking for, they believe, they believe her kid, her little boy, right, Michael Monkey Vaughan, could have been there that could have been his last whereabouts all right and she has had to come out and make a plea and ask the true crime community to stop trying to contact suspects or possible suspects or people that may be suspects in the case let me go see what cleo's doing it's just the postman <laughs> but yeah she's had to make a public plea she's had to ask for people to to, to not contact people regarding her son's case because you're going to spoil it and screw it up Sorry, it was the postman. But anyway, she has had to make a plea, a public plea. And certain channels were airing it last night. I'd um, seen somebody mention it in Justice For Us, chat on a super chat, and I cut it out and shared it on my community page. And then I woke up this morning and there's several videos made of her making the plea because I hadn't seen it at that point. But I was like, wow, that woman, that mother, that is going through this horror in hell right now, now there's people interfering in that case. Like, leave things alone. But it, but it's their superior attitude, isn't it? They, they believe that they can uncover shit more than the police can, quicker than the police can, better than the police can. They've got this, like, entitled superior attitude regarding themselves, that they're above everybody else and they can do these things and they're going to find stuff out because they're them, all right, and you're not. It's just sick. Let's move on from this bit. Narcissistic people always tell themselves unintentionally. And when he's saying none of us are doing this intentionally. The opposite is true. When narcissistic people say something, the opposite is always true. If they're telling you they're not cheating, they are. If they're telling you, if they're accusing you of cheating, they're up to something. If they're telling you they're going in one place, they're going in another direction. If they're telling you we're going to be together forever, pff, chances are you are not, all right? They're going to make sure to fuck it up. Whatever it is they're saying, the opposite is true, but they're always telling themselves with their own language, okay? And that's what I believe he's doing there. When he's saying to you, none of us are doing this intentionally. <laughs> what? You got up on a panel, Jared, which we're going to go and look at in a second, and you told the audience, the entire community, that it was Jagger and Lightly Kylie at that lake at Boca. It's, uh, uh, and she wasn't at Prosser. She must have gone there after. Because she was seen at Boca at 11 the next morning. So she can't have died that night, the night before. So something happened. Accusing Jagger of murder. Looking at every word he wrote on his um, 
Instagram account while he was grieving his best friend and his ex and someone that he'd probably very much have got back together with. All right, they're teenagers, they split up, they break up, they get back together. They were still friends and he still cared about her. And you destroyed and disrupted their grief. And that is unforgivable. That is unforgivable. And I don't care who you are, that is. No problem helping you guys. We're all in it for the same purpose. We just want to help find answers. And um, it just sucks and right now. I'm just going to say, you know, it, it sucks for Kylie's family because, you know, this is overshadowing a lot of things. And it sucks for Kylie's family. Do you know, that is the same type of wording he uses in his um, video after the news that broke of Jared being indicted. Those kinds of unfathomable words. They just don't cut the situation. It sucks for Kylie's family. Are you kidding me? That is the understatement of a, of, of, of a lifetime. That is, it sucks. Really? They've just found out their 16-year-old that was ahead by two years in her classes. Right? Intelligent, lovely, smart girl that had a whole future ahead of her. The only child is missing. And you say it sucks for her family, all this, wondering what happened, really. <laughs> you can't, you are fucking hell. I don't even have the words in the whole entire English language to describe what that family must have gone through. I bet she doesn't even have any. I bet she can't even find the right words that justify and put to point what she went through or what this internet put her through while she was trying to grieve her daughter. All right? You're saying it sucks? <laughs> wow. Wow. Watch this question in now by Tyler. I was just going to flick off from him and go to Jared, right? But listen to the question in of Tyler here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Really good question. And watch his behaviour and his words. You've seen how chatty he can be, right? Spilling out sentences. Trying to sound like the caring, bloody humanitarian, right? And listen to this response. Right, and that's the thing I've seen. Like, I grew up in Missouri. I'm like, everybody has St. Louis Cardinal's hat where I grew up. Like, literally, everybody I can think about St. Louis Cardinal hat. Same thing there. Everybody has the San Francisco giant hat that's, that they're wearing. So I definitely understood that. Um, so I was trying to make that point too. But uh, so I appreciate, you, I appreciate you sharing that. Was that date confirmed that it was on the Saturday morning or Sunday? Yep. And it was confirmed to be her car? Um, as, as far as I know. Same thing there. Everybody has the San Francisco. Watch the nodding. When, he, when Tyler says, <clears throat> it's a bit hurried while Tyler's speaking. But when Tyler says, was it confirmed? He can't speak. He just nods. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he's lying. He is lying right there. That's his account. That they're wearing. So I definitely understood that. Um, so I was trying to make that point too. But uh, so I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing that. Was that date confirmed that it was on the Saturday morning or Sunday? Yep. And it was confirmed to be her car. Um, as, as far as I know, yes. Um, and they, the authorities have all that information. Um, in there. As far as I know. As far as I know. Okay. Again, with the insurance policy. I'm going to direct you to think something, but I'm going to give myself an out if later it's determined that I was incorrect. All right. So that I still end up being right because I never specifically put all my eggs in one basket. Are you understanding this is this is manipulation and you're missing it. It's going over your head because you don't know to look for it. This is manipulation. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. Was that date confirmed that it was on a Saturday morning or Sunday? You can't speak. Yeah. And it was confirmed to be your car. Um, as, as far as I because know. his mind knows he's about he needs to tell a lie okay and he doesn't feel comfortable telling it he knows he's in front of an audience and when you lie you have to do several more things than if you were telling the truth all right first you have to tell yourself i'm going to lie then you quickly have to think of something that you can say that is a lie that's going to sound truthful so you're trying to think fast right then you've got to pre-edit it because you can't edit it while you're saying it because you're going to fuck up and sound like you're lying. So you've got to pre-edit the words that you've not even spoken yet. Do you know, like, it's not just as easy as you think just lying. There's more goes into it. All right. There's three things there I've just said that you have to do before you, that your brain has to do before you lie. You first have to acknowledge, no, I'm not going to tell the truth here. All right. That's often why people shake their heads when they're saying yes. They'll shake their head no when they're saying yes, <laughs> because the brain's still not caught up that, you know, the brain's not with where the mouth is. The brain's not caught up to the mouth, the mind rather. And so then you've got to tell yourself you're going to tell a lie. So no stops on you. You're going to lie here. Right. And you're going to say, what can you say quick? What the fuck can you say? Uh, well, shit, just say, so you know, I can't think of anything. Fuck. I can't think of anything. Right. Um, and then you've got to pre-edit it before you say it because you can't. It's not like writing where you can, 
delete and edit and change things around. When you're speaking a lie, it's harder. You have to pre-edit what you're about to say and you don't even know what you're about to say because you're still thinking about it. So your brain is going at a million miles an hour. I believe this man, in my opinion, he is lying here. He's lying, all right? And then at the same time, he's given himself what's known as an insurance policy. He's given himself an out. So if later he's found that what he said was wrong, well, he didn't really say it, actually, because he did kind of say, well, you know, how many blonde girls are there in California? It could have been anyone, but we know it was Kylie, all right? We know it was Kylie. <laughs> Get the fuck out. Yes, um, the, the authorities have all that information um, in there. You know, I appreciate you sharing that. Was that date confirmed that it was on the Saturday morning or Sunday? Yep. And it was confirmed to be your car? Um, as, as far as I know, yes. Um, um, the, the authorities okay. have all that information um, in there, you know. Putting it back on the authorities, they've got it. We can't talk about this investigation. It's the perfect cover. Again, with an insurance policy, it's the perfect one, isn't it? They get to say what the fuck they like because the police never just come out and correct all these maniacs. They just don't, and I don't blame them. Because whenever they come out and correct something, they always say, oh, well, you know, well, what did that mean? And what did that mean? And that could have meant this. And really, really, they could have been saying this. And no, I don't think they were telling us to stop. I'm thinking, you know, that they're happy that we're giving them all these tips and we're just going to carry on. And all that com complete fuckery goes on so the police shouldn't keep coming out and correcting these idiots because the more they say the more they have to dissect and misinterpret all right because that's all they're intent on doing misinterpreting what you are saying is calculated it's calculated misinterpretation they are choosing to not understand and know what's going on because they want to a b and c you want to fuck around and it's about time they all started finding out, right? Be accountable. You can't just do this shit to, pe to people, to human beings at the worst times of their life. That's why we have professionals. Because when it's just us doing it in our own vigilante way, look at the fuck-ups that are made, the ethics and morals that are just completely ignored and the principles. There's no boundaries. That's why we have professionals. So they follow a professional procedure. Okay, so you you want two things though, these kinds of tragedy pimps. They want there to be a professional procedure, but they don't want to have to go along with it. They want to be above that and um, above the law and they they just want to investigate their own way. Like camping out in, in front of houses. Uh, Billy Joe's, Lilani, the little boy, Quinton Simon. What are they doing there? Fucking terrorising a neighbourhood for the hell of it. Using the same abusive language. They're accusing the family of doing, all right? So the abusive, narcissistic behaviour that was going on in this house, right? They're creating it outside of the house and they call it protesting. They're abusers is what they are. They're abusers. They're not speaking. They're not talking. They're not educating. They're screaming and calling people names and accusing them of crimes with no proof because of the way they feel. And they feel because of the way they feel that they're entitled to go and express it in the nastiest, cruelest ways possible. And I'm just sick of all of it. I am sick of the exploitation of it all. Hey, they're dealing with it. Still not got to jail. Um, like I said earlier, you know, we just have to, unfortunately, right. be patient I think I've proven there. my point with him. I'll be back in a second. It was indeed Kylie's vehicle. We immediately notified family. This next bit is just, I think it's important that you hear it, okay? It's when Nick says the position you put us in, all right? Law enforcement and dad and grandpa were on scene within minutes. Please refer to our episodes for complete search investigation that we conducted. These episodes will be released very soon. Again, this takes time to edit. We will need to put these together in an appropriate way in order to respect law enforcement as well as the family. But that those should be out, I would estimate, probably within uh, the next week or so. Um, the Placer County Sheriff's Department, Nevada County Sheriff's Department, the entire Placer County Sheriff's Dive Team has been incredible to work with. We understand that the resource we provide with our unique skill set is rare. It is an honor to help agencies and families all across the nation. We will be working together with authorities here to share. And that honor should be respected. OK, and in the case of Cali Rodney, you did not do that. You did not do that. You did not respect that family. You have put out stories, misleading information. Facts that weren't facts, okay? And led an entire hate campaign in their direction. Hitched up by Ryan fucking up church. Knowledge over the next couple of days. It is always our mission to promote and share the techniques we utilize so that our purpose can help as many people as possible. We'd like to thank all of our supporters. We can't thank all of you enough for your donations and putting us in this position as we continue to grow and help more families. Putting us in this position, right? And when we're putting people in this position, we should be vetting them every step of the way, not overlooking things. We should be vetting them as they go on this journey. All right. We all know that money and attention goes to your head. We all know that. I think we learn that as teenagers. 
people should be vetted. And that is why we have professionals that have to follow protocol and procedure. Because if we didn't, right, the greed or whatever is driving this, the attention, whatever, the views, the getting more subscribers and memberships, it isn't authentic. Okay, when you're doing this as a job and this is your nine to five, Monday to Friday, and you're paid and rewarded for doing that, you have to follow a line of professionalism. When they're just independent agencies like this, self-funded and self-created, who is policing the police comes to mind. Nobody. Nobody was policing the police in this situation, if you understand what I'm saying. By creating these independent groups, there is nobody to police them. Nobody. They can do as they wish and conduct themselves as they wish. And when they get all this power, which having a whole nearly three million people believing in your cause under you, it's no different to when people start up cults and societies and they lead people in wrong directions or mislead people because of how they've presented themselves to be. It's dangerous. And in this instance, it's proven. Somebody should have been policing these guys. How many of them were overlooking Jared's traits? Because if that guy saw them in five minutes, Kyla, uh, Sam's son, they all saw the same red flags and the same behaviours. So what? He was there a couple of days, he said. Okay. So in a couple of days, he'd seen enough and fuck, got the fuck out of Dodge. He went. He Off he went. He didn't even, he wouldn't even take any money off his dad. He was like, no, fuck this, right? You're not dropping me off tomorrow with these lot. I'm out of here today. And he called a taxi and got the hell out. Okay. And that's somebody, that's, that's righteous behaviour. That's having good morals and ethics. He saw how many thousands of dollars there were in the side panel of the vehicle when he took that 50 quid off those two old ladies because they believe in the course. So they were like, oh, do you need more help with money towards your fuel? And just gave him $50. Okay, and then he goes into his truck and there's thousands of dollars in the side and he's laughing about it. He's laughing about it. You guys will have seen all his sociopathy and you know that. And um, You should know that I know that now. I know that you will all have seen worse red flags because the longer you're around those types of people, the the more you get to see of them. And, and Doug, I believe you've been around Jared a lot, okay, because he's been training you and mentoring you as his second in command for that second group. You have, how much have you overlooked? Your narcissistic mindset, I, I believe you've got the same type of narcissistic mindset as he has, okay? You don't care about people and morals and feelings. You're about doing this because in the end result means that you gain something from it. You gain a lot from it. Fame, attention. You're held in high esteem in people's minds. You've got people just on the street wanting to throw you $50. Okay. And they probably go short the rest of the month or miss not treating the bloody granddaughter, the friend or going for the coffee or lunch or whatever it is. There's people giving money away like that and it just makes me sick. Even though it's their choice to do so, it's manipulation and I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Grab it again too. I'll send it in the chat. Right, I remember when I said he just appeared in the chat, link me. He just appeared in the chat, right? So let's set the scene here. Um, I was watching Zav's chat, just watching because I just usually watch it. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, like Ryan Upchurch had come in and um, this was before this. And... She just suddenly started getting a lot more attention quickly with this Kylie Rodney case. Like out of nowhere, these all these people just came over. And um, she was having like 2.4k people in a chat, possibly more. And anyway, so Ryan Upchurch decided at this point in time he was going to uh, get back into true crime after he fucked up everything in the Summer Wells case. Uh, with misinformation and things like that. Now he was going to get involved in this case after being dormant for quite a while. So anyway... Um, Jared comes in the chat and he um, says, I just want to thank you, Zav, for all the kind things you're saying. You're doing a good job, OK? Can't stop. Too busy. Got to go. Why? OK. And so immediately when Adventures with Purpose show up in the chat, the bloody chat goes wild. OK. It's this guy, the head of Adventures with Purpose, this fucking hero, walking, talking hero. And here he is. Uh, so everyone's wanting to say hello. OK. Well, he's too busy for that. I can't stop. I've got to go. I can't stay. I've got to go. All right. So he goes 
And I knew, I fucking knew he hadn't gone. I knew he was watching because I was keeping my eye on that account because it was fluttering around several channels, right? And it was also going around smaller channels, telling them that they were crossing over the line, playing their um, behind the scenes, what was supposed to go behind the paywall footage, okay? But it, but he was very arrogant and nasty in the way that he was telling people to not play his stuff, right? But here he is, he comes in here, and this is a really big, huge channel that lots of people are watching right now, and he shows up. Hi, just want to thank you, and then he clears off. Can't say hello, can't stop, can't whatever, right? I've got to go, I'm too busy for all you mere mortals. I can't, I can't, I'm too busy. Okay, so I knew he hadn't gone, because the second Ryan Upchurch showed up in the chat. He wanted a link. Zav said, do you want a link? And he came up immediately, right? This was 20 minutes after, approximately, Adventures with Purpose had come in the chat to thank Zav and say that they were really, really busy. They couldn't stay, but, you know, thanks for all that you do. You're doing a great job. So he goes, Ryan Up Church appears in the chat 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later, and Zav gets his own, do you want a link? So he goes on panel and then immediately, while Ryan's within seconds of talking, this guy appears, link me, okay? Link me. <laughs> Who the fuck are you, right? Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, you're you're the guy that found the car. Okay, yeah, okay, so, come on, let's let God up. Anyway, so when you when you look at, look at everything that was put out and look at people that were getting mad at me, why, the question is, why was there so much purposely wrong information? Why? Well, isn't that a good question? Possibly because people like you... We're putting it out there, dissecting it and sharing it and expanding on it and elaborating on it and going on and on and on and on and on and on. Could that be why, Ryan? Could that be why? And do you guys remember there was that app that was for like citizens that were searching so they could track where they went? Yeah. Wasn't there a red line that went like right around where that car was found? Here he was is. for like God citizens that were searching. God. Hi, Jared. God. Yes. Hi. Welcome, Jared. Oh. Do you Hi. know Ryan? Let me just take a drink. Do you know Ryan? Um, of church, have you guys met Hi. yet, Jared? Wow. Just we have wow. never met. Welcome, Ryan. Jared. What's going on? How's it going, man? Oh, wait, hold on. Everybody, mute. Hold Everyone on. Mute. Everybody on. mute. Everyone mute if you're not. Everyone mute. Yeah. Everyone yeah. appease and fawn to this giant Let me remove and then add again. Because remember how this happened with you? Mm -hmm. That is what that behaviour is called. It's called fawning, okay? And it's when you feel some type of way about the person that you're doing it to, okay? Maybe you feel that they're superior or you might hold them in high esteem. And typically that is the way a lot of us, especially codependent people, uh, fixer type people, tend to behave. They go into fawning mode, acquiescing and appeasing, all right? Instead of just being, hi, nice to meet you. I really appreciate and respect what you do. Right, what did you want to say? Everybody's like, wow. Wow, wow, right, everybody, everybody, everybody turn everything off, right, shut up now, shut up, God is about to speak, and that is how these fucking sociopaths <laughs> just get even all the more entitled and encouraged to continue as they are, because people treat them as they believe they are in their own mind, like a demigod of sorts, it's fucking unbelievable. <laughs> oh, it's because, it's because oh someone has God. two, uh, two tabs open for the YouTube and for the panel. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And there's Ryan, you know, trying to keep his, um, he's like, uh, hang on a minute, I'm the coolest one over here. I'm just going to keep talking a minute just to show, you know, I'm the superior one on this panel. All right. I am. I'm just, I'm just going to keep talking before I acknowledge this guy. Yeah. Jared, do you have two tabs open? No, I'm good. Oh, I think we're good now. Okay, cool. Whatever. I think we're good. All right. Now. Can you hear us? Thank you for coming I, anyway, up. Pleasure, pleasure to meet everyone. So, you know, first of all, Zap, <laughs> thank you for, uh, you know, everything you've been doing as well as all the other YouTubers, you know, and uh, Ryan as well. You know, I mean, you definitely sent us over a lot of uh, new subscribers and, you know, your guys' uh, support and all this. So thank you to everyone and all of you. The way he keeps looking down when he's saying that, okay, it's killing him having to praise someone else. It's killing him. But I have to say thank you. I have to. Okay. You know, that's my demeanor. Kind, caring, humanitarian, altruistic God. 
Um, just real quick, I just want to jump on here as we we're, we're just going through everything. Like the next forty eight hours is going to just going to be a madhouse because, as you know, the members only videos out. We have a lot of people that are scalping it already, and you, you've been very uh, respectful to it and showing screenshots. Not a problem, but we have some people that are straight up doing live streams, showing the whole video. So we're just like on top. Yes, and when you went and told her, she stopped immediately. Okay, she misunderstood. That's all. She misunderstood. She'd paid for her membership, so she thought she could watch it on her channel with the 48 people, if I remember rightly, were there at the time. Okay? She wasn't trying to destroy you. She was watching your content after she'd paid for it. Once you said to her it's not okay to play it, she immediately stopped. There was no need for you to go in there and upset that girl and upset those people in that chat that were... I'm just in awe, just awestruck that you were even over there in a small channel like hers. You were disgusting, absolutely disgusting. You're stepping over the line. What fucking line? Where? The one you drew? As we're cycling through with the mods and everybody. So I appreciate your, you know, um, you know, from one content creator to the other that you're doing it appropriately. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yes. uh, I've put behind a paywall the video of when we recovered the remains of Kylie Rodney. It's behind a paywall. You have to pay a membership to watch it or you can wait a day and watch it then. OK. You are talking about the remains of a 16 year old girl being found in the back of a car. All right. Now, while I appreciate memberships, you have to reward your members for something like this. OK, you already gained substantial numbers. And money just from people wanting to join your cause once they learned about it. <clears throat> and that wasn't good enough. You put the video behind a paywall. And you got an influx of, I dread to even think, thousands. Thousands of people went over there and paid for that just so that they could watch it instead of having to wait a day. Because the hysteria and histrionics that had been stirred up on this case had drove people to such a point, right? They weren't even acting. I don't even believe myself that they were acting in their right frame of mind. Half of them. The shit they were going along with and doing. Just... When a girl's been murdered, uh, found dead, her remains in the back of a car. You added to that hysteria on purpose. It was orchestrated and calculatedly done. And I will never believe different. Never. The I, I just wanted to. I saw that Ryan jumped on here as well. The one we've never said hello. So Ryan, <laughs> you were busy twenty five minutes ago, Jared. You were too busy to stop and say hello to the people in the chat that were greeting you. Okay. Now I can appreciate a hundred people is a lot to say hi to, but you could have done a few personal ones and then said hi to everybody else. I've missed. I'm sorry. There's like loads of you. I can't say hi to each and every one of you. But no, because you have no empathy. None. People are things that you use to profit from, all right? They are tools that you use to tiptoe on in order to be successful. That's it, okay? It wasn't no coincidence that you were on there when Ryan was on. You were in the chat 20 to 25 minutes before he, before he was on that panel and you couldn't stay. You were too busy. You said, a lot of work to do. I've got to get going. But, but just wanted to say good work, good job. The second Ryan's on the panel, link me, link me. Two or three times you wrote it and you were there. And so how, so isn't it, isn't it a coincidence that you were just so busy 25 minutes ago, just so busy, so busy, right? No, sorry. I just cannot say, I can't even say hello to one of you. All right. Or, or say hello to all of you. Right. Uh, I'm so busy. I've got to go. Okay. But 25 minutes later. As soon as Ryan Upchurch is on that panel, there you are in the chat. What a fucking coincidence. And I've just heard Doug say that coincidence can, can count to evidence. <laughs> so going off Doug's theory, all right, Doug's reasoning skills here. My coincidence is now evidence, which is a fact. You were listening. You saw him go up there and you saw your opportunity OK, two large channel holders on another pretty large in our community channel holders channel. That was no accident. No accident. None. OK, the people might not see it, 
I saw it. And, yeah, we, we definitely need to connect. Uh, you know, we had a somebody that was claiming to be your uh, manager. I don't know if it was real or not, but uh, yeah, Brandon, Brandon Luce. Yeah. Yeah, he never responded back to me. So let's, uh, I did respond to him with my direct phone number. So make sure that okay. you give me a call unless just you and yes, I have. Because he'd like your $100,000 in his back pocket ASAP and it's not for AWP. It's for him. Okay. That's what that was. Fucking shady bastard. Yeah, uh, chat offline for sure. We don't need to discuss mm -hmm. anything online. 100%. Um, as far as the different depths, real quick, for what you guys were talking about, you know, 10 feet versus 14 feet. You know, at the back of the vehicle versus the front of the vehicle, you are on a hillside, so you can get different readings there, as well as on sonar, as it's hitting different portions of the car, as the car is slanted, some portions of it, you know, at ground level is going to be 14 feet, at the lower portion. I'm just going to find the bit where they ask him who, who was there by the car, okay? So w you will see different readings on the sonar as we're going over it. Um, there's a lot more that we uh, have cut out of the video. If certain things do happen... I'll just announce it right here. We have two other videos to be released if certain things do take place. And it's just going to be a whole, I mean, nobody knew this uh, footage even existed from the tow truck driver, but we have the full uncut raw uh, complete interview with him as well as his uh, girlfriend who is a nurse. You know, I they're trying to make these this couple sound as authentic as possible. And often people will throw terms around that are, like, you'll see it in a lot of chats of people that want attention. They'll be writing in the chat, I am a nurse, or I was a this, and I was a that. And, like, as though it's, um, as though you, and narcissistic person, I'll tell you why I'm telling you this, because narcissistic personalities in their stupid minds think that if they tell people, oh, I'm a nurse, or I'm some kind of professional, that it puts... Well, already it puts an idea in your mind that this person is a professional. And if they're a nurse, then they must be caring. And if they're caring, then they must be honest. And if they're honest, then they must be trustworthy. And you go down, you know, you have like um, a rationalization spiral. All right. So if any red flags do show up, you're going to overlook them because you've already decided nurse equals caring equals trustworthy equals honest. Right. And that's what he's doing there. When he's telling you, when he's putting that bit in there that she's a nurse, that's all he's doing. He's laying down in your mind the idea that this person is going to be honest and trustworthy and what she has to say is credible. That's all he's doing is total manipulation. They, they, they are credible stand-up people. They tracked us down. It was, you know, the rolling billboard of AWP and just seeing us pulling off of the, uh, of the interstate at Best Buy that first night that we got in town. We didn't track them down. It was just they, they saw us, just a chance encounter, and they tracked. So they saw the poster of missing Kylie Rodney, and then, well, what, the day after, two days after, the CAWP roll up into town, and they're like, wow, shit, we need to speak to them. Well, how the fuck did they know who Adventures with? Oh, right, yeah, because they were a fan of Adventures with Purpose. Yeah, was that the story? They were a fan. Okay, so that's how they knew to approach you. But how did they know to approach you about Kylie Rodney? How did they know that's why you were in town if they weren't following this? If it took them a week after they saw who they believed to be Kylie and Jagger, it took them until a week after. Then they see the poster, apparently. I'm just trying to follow along their story here. Um, then they see the poster a week after. And then out of the blue, a couple of days later, they see a truck of AWP just rolling around the corner. And here we go again with Doug's line of thinking. OK, well, coincidences can be evidence. Right, well, I find this to be evidence of another lie. It's just total bullshit. So this guy, a week after, sees the Kylie poster, thinks to himself, oh, that's who I must have seen, that girl. Right, well, shit, it says on the poster to ring the police. I'm going to ring the police. But hang on a minute, I don't do that, because when exactly is it they see you rolled into town, did you say? You weren't quite clear on that part. When did they see you? The same day, the day after, the day after that. Why hadn't they rang the police? And if they had rang the police, how come they were showing you the evidence that should be with the police? It's all a load of fabricated bullshit, is what it is. And if half of them on that panel had any inve investigative skills whatsoever, they would have figured that out then. Okay, this guy is inserting himself, like people do, into true crime because they're weirdos. They love death, disaster, mystery, tragedy, heinous fucking accidents. They love it. They love it. 
down and we had the interview with them, wow. which is why we ended up over there at Boca instead of over at Prosser to begin with. Had we ended up on Prosser based upon our normal search. So the way when they like to brag to people that they found Kylie in 20 minutes on that lake. No, 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 no. They came into town the day before and they were searching Boca and something somewhere else. They were searching there because they were given a clue, a tip, because after seeing this random Kylie Rodney video that clearly says on the bottom of it, call the police, it doesn't say call AWP, it says call the police, right? I don't even know what they did after that. This, this, this story is so fucked up. So they see the poster, they don't call the police or they do, I'm not clear on which, and then all of a sudden they see AWP roll into town. So how did they know AWP was there to... Um, conduct the Rod Kelly Rodney case because they'd only just found out who she was two days before so they weren't following the story online clearly right they weren't following the story and then what did you say do things up wow. which is why we ended up over there at Boca instead of oh yeah so he finds you and he says to you hey I think I saw those two over at Boca and on the whim of a guy that you've just met but his wife, the girlfriend, is a nurse, which means trustworthy and honest. <laughs> if only you knew, right? You know how many toxic people are nurses, okay? Vulnerable people. They love them. So, off the word of a nurse. Because she knows it was her dad's birthday or some shit. When, when, when her boyfriend, who isn't quite clear on what day it could have been, Saturday or Sunday, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. But what, what, what day did you say that she went missing again? Oh, right, well, it could have been Saturday. I'm sure it was Saturday that was there because on Saturday, that's when I tend to be around Prosser County. Is that right? I think that's what he said. Prosser to begin with. Had we ended up on Prosser based upon our norm... So it didn't take them 20 minutes to find her because they were there the day before fucking around. All right? It took them two days. All search in the way that we do things of... Where were they last seen? What was the last cell phone ping? We would have been right there and we would have, you know, on day one versus day two. So, Jared, I... Well, you told us that you were liaising with the police and the agencies and you'd been asked to come in in a professional capacity and you were told that you were allowed to search there. There probably wasn't any point because they'd already searched it, okay? But as is your motto, nowhere's considered clear until we've cleared it. Uh, you didn't go there, you went to Boca. You're saying that the reason that you went to, to a Boca first is because of the tow truck guy, or yeah. like a be, be, oh because because we always we always I go off. saw that looking to the right. I'm sure looking to the right is when you look into your creative mind to lie. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Look at that look on his face. I do not know how you don't see it. You can see it in his fucking eyes. Dead eyes. Dead eyes. Of last known location. And so yeah. we have no doubt in trusting him because of his presence, his girlfriend. And oh, at the same story. Okay. So because of his presence and his girlfriend. Did you hear that? Did you hear what they're running off? These inve investigative guys. They're running off his presence. <clears throat> what the fuck does that even mean? Somebody that you've known for two seconds, you're running off their presence. You're going off their presence. Really? You are a dipshit. It was told three You're times. It was, dipshit. you know, it was from memory. It wasn't like I'm making this up on the spot. Like you are right now. And so very credible, which gives us a new last known location. Oh my gosh. In wow. this and here we are busting this case wide open. Okay? Wide open. Here we are. Look at us. Check us out, guys. Check us out. We busted this case wide open. What you believe is the last known sighting, the ping of um, Kylie Rodney. No, 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 no. It was a boker. We've, we've had a sighting of boker the morning after the evening she was believed to have passed. <laughs> you fucking arsehole. Well, no, and I, and I stop looking to the right. I can't remember if we showed it on video or not, but we did make an immediate phone call to the detectives as well to verify this. Now, the thing is, is that you have multiple, um, uh, you know, people taking these tips, you know, from two different counties and 18 different agencies. Mm -hmm. And so while the detective that we made contact with immediately on the spot, while I'm sure it's when you're looking up to the left, it's memory recall. And when you're looking to the right, it's creative and imagination. 
So when you look to the left, it's often memory recall. So you're pulling up something that's factual. And when you're looking to the right, it's your creative side. You're trying to make something up kind of thing. I'm sure it is. I am fucking sure it is. The tow truck drivers there with us that night, that detective that we spoke to had never heard this, you know, this confession, the story before. Oh, so he never went to the police when he saw the flyer. And yet he has an honest presence because his wife or girlfriend is a nurse. Really? Are you for fucking real? Are you for real? And these people in this chat were just lapping this up. Absolutely swallowing every fucking word. Every word. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing how easily you can manipulate an entire group of people and they have no knowledge of it. It's just amazing to me. Absolutely amazing. And if you call them out, you're the bad guy. We have this thing in this world where a whistleblower is always seen as a bad guy. I've never understood it. Never understood it. So when somebody's exposing something that's going on, what, people get upset. And you know why they often get upset? Because they're, some of them are the ones doing those same shady things. And if you're drawing attention to that one, chances are you might spot them doing the same thing. And they don't want, they don't want that to happen. Societal narcissism. But that doesn't mean that it wasn't recorded somewhere else. Remember, uh, what was there like 1,500 or 2,000 tips that came in and they have to filter through all the... Let me find Doug telling you that you should call the police if you have any um, information on the Kylie Rodney case. And then I'm closing this off. I'm closing it off. I'll have to do a second part. It's just going on far too long. It's like an hour and 30 minutes already, for fuck's sake. Okay. I found it. Everybody lost their minds when Jagger was trying to encourage people to come to him if they didn't want to go to the police. They couldn't understand why he would say such a thing. They thought him and Sammy, by saying that, were trying to um, be strategic in what evidence they gave to the police about the party from the night before. They, the community, the true crime community, attacked them ferociously for simply asking friends if they did know something. Just please come to me, right? Come to me, please. Just tell, tell it me, okay? And here we have Doug here. Listen to what he says. Please be considerate of the fact that we cannot disclose a lot of the information surrounding us being requested to agencies we will be working with and so forth. And make sure that you are connected uh, with our YouTube and our Facebook page as well so that you can follow us along and get updated as far as what's, what's un unraveling in front of us. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, I want to encourage everyone out there, you know, if you have tips or information, make sure you reach out to the Placer County Sheriff's Office, the Nevada County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, or me directly at Doug at AdventuresWithPurpose.com if you have credible information. Or me directly at Doug at AdventuresWithPurpose.com. Did you hear that? Okay. If you have any credible tips or information, why are they sending them to him? He's not an investigator. He's not a police officer. Did he get pulled up for saying that? Did he? Let's listen again. Doug. Involving this case traveling in front of us. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, I want to encourage everyone out there, you know, if you have tips or information, make sure you reach out to the Placer County Sheriff's Office, the Nevada County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, or me directly at Doug at AdventuresWithPurpose.com if you have credible... Or me directly, if you have credible information. Can you bloody believe that? Okay.